we're back with another AP Biology Study With Me video. This time we're going to be reviewing topics from Unit 8, which is the Ecology Unit and an important part of the AP Biology exam. This is a little bit different than some of my other videos where we're actually going to dig deep into some content and do some practice application questions that have to do with topics from this unit. Now these are all practices based in learning sciences, so they should be really effective study tools, and hopefully you can take some of these strategies with you and apply them to other parts of your study plan. Make sure you check out some of my other study resources as well. I have a lot of videos on tips and strategies for how to do well on the AP or other science related exams. And make sure you let me know if this video has been helpful. I got a lot of great comments on my other study with me video and so that's why I'm making more of these. We're talking about ecology today and I'm going to lump together a lot of topics that come in unit 8 ecology which is the last unit on the AP biology exam. So my first study strategy we're going to do together today this is a concept map. I'm going to list on the screen a bunch of vocabulary terms and ideas that I think might be helpful for you to know or at least be able to relate to other ideas in ecology. So take a piece of paper and on the center of your paper what I want you to do is draw a circle and write ecology in the center. Then what we're going to do is create a concept map by linking together these ideas in whatever way you see fit in the time that I provide. So I'm going to set the timer for about eight minutes or so and we're going to sit here and draw this concept map together. Now it doesn't have to be pretty, you'll see that my handwriting is pretty messy, so as I do this with you, you can either follow along or create your own. So get your paper, get something to write with, and let's get ready to create a concept map. So I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna play some music in the background while we create our concept maps. This is so it's just not awkward and in silence, even though Learning Sciences says that it's best to study in silence. So if you wanna mute the audio in this video, you can do that, or you can play your own relaxing ambient or white noise. The other thing too is that I said I'd give you eight minutes, but the way I'm editing it, it's actually coming down to about five. So if you wanna time yourself for longer, you can always pause the video and keep working when five minutes of the concept map comes to the end. All right, let's get started.
Alright, so let's check out our concept maps. Yours may look something like mine, it may be a little neater than mine, or it may look totally different. There's really no parameters here on how exactly you're supposed to do this. What you want to do instead is try to make connections between these ideas, and as you're drawing these connections, physically drawing them, you're also drawing connections in your mind, and that'll help you remember the material later. It'll also help you recall examples and different situations where some of this material may be interconnected. My messy one's a little bit hard to read, but I did get through all of the words on my list in the time. If you didn't get through all the words, that's okay too. Here's a simplified version with some of the terms that you can read probably a little bit better that I've created on these slides. Again, this one doesn't have all of the terms, but you can also start to link these ideas to other units as well. Try making a really big concept map that links ecology terms and terms from evolution, unit 7. There's a lot of themes that cross over between these two units, and it would be fun to see how many connections you can draw. So let's take a look at what I created here. I have ecology in the middle, and a main theme in ecology is the survival of organisms. So I wrote survival here, and then population growth. So survival of any population leads to population growth until until it reaches that carrying capacity. And this is due to limiting factors such as energy availability in the environment. Now over here I have symbiotic relationships branching out since I didn't do all the other terms and you won't see the rest of those terms on here. I have disruptions down here such as connecting that to human impact can decrease biodiversity which eventually can lead to extinction. So you see how I'm starting to make connections between all of these different concepts that may link back to some other units as well like speciation and extinction from evolution. Solution. All right, my next activity we're going to do today during our study session is a creation of a chart. Charts are great ways to study. It helps you lay out information in an organized way, and it helps with recalling examples. So in our chart today, we're going to be coming up with examples for different types of disruptions to environment. It's always good to have examples in the back of your head. You don't have to memorize every example or know the entire breadth of biology to do well in the AP exam, but having a few examples in your brain bank might be helpful when it comes to answering some of the free response questions. Again, you don't need to know all all of the examples or memorize every term that shows up in this video or in your textbook, but knowing a few examples of each main concept within AP Biology is going to be really helpful for you. So on this chart here, I have a disruption listed. I want you to fill out the description to it and then an example of each. So go ahead and either do this on your own paper or you can use the slides that I've linked in the description of this video. Take a moment to pause, fill out the chart, and then come check it against what I have. Alright, so our first disruption, introduction of an invasive species. For the description, I just basically have what came from the course and exam description, and that's the introduction of an invasive species allows the species to exploit a new niche free of predators or competitors to outcompete other organisms for resources. My example here is kudzu. Kudzu is a super invasive mine that's really overtaken the southeastern United States. It was first introduced in the 1800s as an ornamental and then later introduced even more to prevent erosion in certain areas, but it can grow super fast and it definitely outcompetes a lot of other native plant species. This eventually leads to kudzu becoming very successful and overtaking a lot of organisms that are native to the environment, and then that leads to a loss of biodiversity within the environment. So here we have human activities can introduce diseases that devastate native species. Dutch Elm disease can kill trees really rapidly if it's not managed properly. Habitat change, there's a lot of things that humans can do that can change the habitat, such as pollution, urbanization, deforestation, logging, monocropping, the list goes on. We could focus on Nigeria as a place that's rapidly industrialized in recent years. Along with the desertification of the Sahara, the urbanization of many areas in Nigeria has led to habitat loss, which forces species to either migrate towards Central Africa or become extinct and die off because of the loss of their environment. Geological events, things not caused by humans, can also be a major disruption to a particular environment. We're all familiar with the meteor impact that caused the dinosaurs to be wiped out and started the KT extinction. Try using charts like these when you have to organize different ideas from a particular unit. Coming up on our last section of our study video, we're going to go through some questions. In this section, I want you to make sure that you're thinking about where you get these answers from. If they come from your brain and you get them right, that's information you know well and you probably don't need to review too much more. If you get them and you have to use a resource to look them up, you want to make sure you mark that as something to go back and study later. And if you have absolutely no clue on how to answer the question, that's something you really need to go back and study later. So make sure you mark each of these questions with either brain, resource, or no clue in whatever symbols you choose on this next section. You can write directly on the slides, but don't peek ahead if you're using those because the answers are on the slides. <laughs> Alright, first question. Discuss the role of photosynthesis and cellular respiration in carbon cycling in the biosphere. 
Question two. The following graph, which refers to this one, depicts a typical predator-prey relationship. Draw the graph again, imagining that the predator is hunted to extinction after a short period of time. Question three. Based on the information in the graph, which is this one here, give a hypothesis for reasons behind the population decrease of the yellow perch. And lastly, list at least four effects of human activity on the water cycle. Take a moment to pause the video and try to answer these questions either using your brain, a resource, or marking if you have no clue. Alright, let's review some of these answers. As far as photosynthesis and cellular respiration involved in the carbon cycling of the biosphere, this is a huge part of ecology and our cell energy unit. Photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide. It also reduces CO2, you could have written that as well. You could also say it fixes carbon into organic molecules or sugars. You don't need to write all of these things if you were to answer this question on an FRQ, for example, but any one of these would have sufficiently answered the question. Next up, cellular respiration metabolizes organic molecules or sugars. It returns carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Remember, we exhale it. It's a byproduct of cellular respiration or it releases CO2. Let's look at the predator-prey model. You should be able to recognize this as a very typical predator-prey relationship graph. But if the predator is hunted to extinction, after a short period of time, we should see a spike in the population of prey. If we look towards longer periods of time, the population of prey may actually get too large and there may not be enough resources for all the entire population. As long as you drew a spike for the prey right after the predators were hunted to extinction, you probably would have gotten this question right. All right, let's take a look at this kind of messy graph here with the yellow perch and the rainbow smell. What is your hypothesis behind the decline in the yellow perch? Well, the rainbow smelt is likely an invasive species that was introduced. We notice it's not there at all before this particular time. And then the rainbow smelt is probably able to outcompete the yellow perch because it doesn't have any natural predators or checks in the new environment. Even though we may see declines at certain points, the population overall continues to rise for this particular invasive species. Lastly, four effects of human activity on the water cycle. Well, you could say a lot of things for this. So if you wrote something else, that's totally fine too. You could say something like groundwater depletion, or water brought to the surface evaporates faster. When it's evaporated, water vapor is a greenhouse gas, which can lead to climate warming. And then climate warming melts ice caps and glaciers, which increases sea levels and evaporation. These reasons are all sort of connected here, but you could think about others, including pollution, runoff, acid rain, acidification of the ocean, all of these things have an impact on the water cycle. All right, that's it for our study period for today. Be sure to check out more of my resources and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.